Hello, I'm Luke Singleton and welcome to Spark Recruitment's Illuminate interview series. As an IT recruitment specialist, we're lucky to partner with a number of high profile IT employers in the Australian market. We get exposure to their groundbreaking work. In this series, we'll be showcasing the story behind their success. I'm here today with Chris Starsmere, who is the CEO of Diversus Group. Chris, we've worked together for, for quite a while now. Long time now, yeah. Yeah, about seven years, I think it is. Um, I'd, I'd love for you to just give us an insight as to who Diversus Group are, please. Sure. Look, um, Diversus Group's a, uh, a company that's formed back in 2006. We were initially formed um, solely to provide professional services to uh, businesses that were developing solutions on uh, NetApp technology. In fact, back then, Luke, really, the majority of our revenues came from uh, subcontracting directly into NetApp's professional services organisation. So um, at that time, you know, the guys were working sort of 100% on NetApp uh, enterprise clients, primarily in defence, uh, intelligence and financial services. So really working in that enterprise space. Uh, so roll forward now, we're really focused on the hybrid cloud and, and cyber security. You know, NetApp's still a very big part of our business, Luke. You know, we were the uh, NetApp Gold Partner of the Year uh, at their awards in the last year. So, still plays a big part, but we focus on a lot more of the uh, the enterprise now. Okay, great stuff. And you must have been very proud about that, that award. Yeah, yeah, stoked, actually. It yeah. came out of the blue. We weren't expecting it. Yeah, cool. And one of the things that, that we've enjoyed about recruiting for Diversis is that you guys have got such a strong staff retention and you've got a really healthy, robust culture despite being a services business where you're, you're based all around the country and also internationally, how have you managed to, to build and maintain that culture with your team? Yes, yeah, interesting question. You know, as an organisation, we, we're not into micromanagement. So one of the first things we say uh, when people come to an interview, if, if, if you're used to an organisation where you're, you're modicoddled and you're, and you're really well managed, don't come here. Right, we're, we're, we're a really flat organisation, so we, we need self-starters, self-motivated people who can manage their own diaries. We often joke, you know, we say, look, if you work better at one o'clock in the morning in a box of shorts, and that works, go for it. Hopefully your clients don't get to see you at one o'clock in the morning in your box of shorts. But well, you can just wear a shirt yeah. above the table, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Obviously, Diverse have been around since 2006, but you've seen the industry change significantly probably in the last 10 to 15 years. Yeah. What, what are your views around the, the sort of current situation and what the future holds around that technical change? Yeah, look, it, it, it's interesting. There's no doubt about it. We are in unprecedented change right now. The, the, the speed, the pace, the velocity of change is, is immense. Um, you know, if you roll the clock back to sort of look at, you know, how did we get to here, you know, roll back to that first industrial revolution. So the late 1700s to the 1800s, that was really all around mechanicisation. You know, the, and that, that pace of change was over 100 odd years. So, and then the second industrial revolution, the, you know, the late 1800s through the 60s, that's mass production, that's electrification. You know, and that was not as long as that, as that the first era. We, you know, we're sort of 80 odd years, but a long time. You, know, you then hit the 70s and we we're into the birthplace of modern computing. Um, you know, that was the era of the mainframe, it was the birth of the PC, and most probably most revolutionary for all of us is uh, you know, the beginning of the internet. You know, and so you look at what's happened there, and then now where we are in the so-called fourth industrial revolution, and this is where the pace of change is just amazing. Uh, we're doing things now that were unprecedented. You can do things in a couple of years that you, know, you just wouldn't think were possible. So what that does, you know, for us in particular, and working with people like yourselves, is the skills profile that we're going to need going forward, totally different. Uh, it's a totally different skill set going forward. And that's cyber security, it's around unstructured education, it's all these different things. It's sort of the, you know, the confluence of nanotechnology, it's 3D printing, it's, it's big data. There's just things that are happening now that, that you know, you and I cut our teeth running around office blocks with floppy disk drives on a Saturday morning trying to update PCs. Now these guys are coding directly into the cloud and stuff like that. It, it, it's a different world. Yeah, it's phenomenal. So, so from your, your business's perspective, yeah. what does that do in terms of your, your mix of services? Our, our profile has changed. We, as I said, you know, we're now focused on the hybrid cloud cyber security. Who knows where we're going to be in a year or two years' time? Uh, you know, that, that, that pace of change, it's hard to predict. It was, it was easy back in the 70s, 80s, 90s. You know, much, much shorter period of change, but still a long period of change, if you know what I mean. 
so for us, uh, it's, it's going to be, you know, hold on to the seat and <laughs> see where we go. Yeah. The, other, the other interesting piece has been the buyer's journey. So, you know, the business to buyer, business to business buyers, he's changed. So, so for us, you know, they're researching our products and services before they even pick up the phone to call us. So again, for us, um, the change there is fundamental. Our, our sales and marketing needs to be aligned more with the buyer's journey than it traditionally was. And that's really leveraging social media, you know, disruptive technologies, et cetera, to, to try and catch that buyer early. Yeah. And so, certainly, you obviously mentioned hybrid cloud a fair bit today, and that, that's a focus as is cybersecurity, which is obviously very prevalent in the media. Yeah. But with hybrid cloud, what specifically do you mean by that, just for the uninitiated? Yeah, look, I guess if you look at, at the market, Luke, there's kind of, some people have sort of stuck their head in the sand. They're still trying to do the same old thing the same way, everything on premise. Uh, and then you've got, at the other end of the spectrum, people who are absolutely embracing this change. You know, we don't subscribe to either, either model. Um, what we do believe is that, you know, you put your data set and your working data in the right place at the right time. Uh, and, and acknowledge that that's going to change over time. So that's going to be a bit of a mix of um, infrastructure you control in your own data center, it's going to be leveraging uh, the public cloud providers and the hyperscalers, the Azure's, the AWS's, the Google's, etc. Um, but it's not going to be in one place or the other. So we're really focused on, on helping businesses get a framework in place that allows them to move their data around any uh, part of the, the hybrid cloud. Yeah, and obviously with worker flexibility, uh, you know, people wanting to reduce commuter time, all this kind of stuff, it's enabling what the future work generation will be from, a, from an infrastructure platform that then people can pin the apps on and all that kind of stuff. Well, it's interesting, you know, I, I, there's a coffee shop um, below our building and, and we have uh, senior students from the high school next door and you, you arrive in that coffee shop in the morning. The, the way that they're working, the way they're conditioned, my daughter and son, everything is on a mobile device. Uh, and they're not tied to a desk, they work anywhere. You know, and we hear this, you know, we've got a modern workplace environment, you can work anywhere, but you know, that's still not enabled in a lot of businesses. A lot of our clients are still very traditional, but the generation coming through, uh, you know, we've got, to, we've got to offer them different ways of working, otherwise we're not going to attract them. So Chris, one of my favourite questions is always to ask um, your views as an industry mentor about the top three tips for aspiring IT professionals in, in today's market. Yeah. You, you've obviously shared some views about tomorrow's market, but if we just focus on today's market, I'd, I'd love to get your opinions. Sure, top three. I mean, uh, you know, a common theme of our conversation, Luke, is, it, is things are changing. So the, you know, the new norm is that in, in technology is that technology is changing. So, you know, advice for um, people coming through the ranks, you know, continually learn, you know, educate yourself. You, you can't rely on your employer to provide you a structured learning path and structured learning. A, a lot of the times we're seeing now when the vendors bring out their, their um, formal courseware, it's already out of date. You know, their technology has is, is surpassed the, the, um, the courseware. So, you know, take advantage of social media, use the internet, continually better yourself, continually learn. Uh, that's important. Um, you know, secondly, it's a competitive market. You know, you, you know that more than anybody. Um, you know, a, a higher ed degree definitely helps. It, you know, it's not necessarily mandatory, but if, if, if you're giving us a shortlist of candidates and we've got 10 CVs, you know, we've got a short, that shortlist that as well and coloured out. So looking for a degree helps. And also with this change in, um, in, in the business mix and with IT getting closer to the business, you know, a traditional engineering degree and a computer science degree, still a great degree, absolutely no doubt about it, but you know, maybe a, a Bachelor of Commerce or a, or a business degree may be more helpful going forward as well to be able to talk to the business. Uh, last thing I would observe is um, you know, LinkedIn. If you're not on LinkedIn, get on it. Uh, if you are on LinkedIn, work on your profile. You know, put a professional picture up there. If you haven't got a picture on your LinkedIn profile, put a picture on. You know, we see a lot of people. A, a picture helps yeah. frame that. Um, skills and endorsements. You know, work on those. Get endorsements. Get skills on there. Really build your profile, and that's where you know value-added recruiters like yourself can really help on the on the other side of the fence, on the on the candidate side, to help these guys and girls get a good profile up there. Because you know, we let's face it, we all use LinkedIn. 
And, and, and you know, don't put a photograph of yourself at the pub or down at skiing or at the rugby, you know, it's great fun, but that belongs was on Facebook or Snapchat, whatever the, whatever the thing is at the moment, but keep LinkedIn for business and, and don't blur those lines because it, you know, it's a, it's a very strong tool. Yeah, it's a business network. Yeah, like, absolutely. Like so. Chris, thanks so much for your time today and for sharing your insights. I, I've really enjoyed speaking with you and uh, obviously thanks for working with Spark. Look, thanks Luke. I uh, you know, appreciate the open and honest relationship we've had over the years and, and long may it continue. Great stuff. Cheers, thanks. Chris. Cheers. Okay.